James Mansfield here, and you're watching Drag Herstory, the show where we salute the girls who laid the foundation by applying one. In today's lesson, we salute the gals who forged a path in entertainment and activism. These ladies walk the walk to help get us the rights we enjoy today. We begin with Chili Pepper, a legend in the Chicago drag scene. <laughs> Chili Pepper made a huge splash in the scene when she made an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show. Chili, with her sass and biting wit, enchanted Oprah and humanized the drag scene to the housewives that watch the Oprah Winfrey show all across the country. Chili, you've been de uh, described as a Chicago institution, and the quote I read was, that much like the water tower, except with better jewelry. Well, I hope they're <laughs> right. Not to mention she dared talk about HIV AIDS in a time when it was very much a hush-hush topic. Chili Pepper has been a model for Donna Karen, a former Miss Continental, and has enjoyed a long career at the Baton Lounge, cementing her status as a legend in Chicago nightlife. Our next lady is Lori Shannon, a hilariously talented queen who made a scene with her appearances on Norman Lear's All in the Family. Hi! Oh, hello! hello. Is this the Bunker residence? Yeah, I'm Mrs. Bunker. Oh, I'm Beverly LaSalle. Is your husband home? She played Beverly LaSalle, a transgendered woman who Archie Bunker saves with CPR when she passes out in the back seat of his cab. She became a beloved character in the series and would make two more appearances. Well, sit down. I'm glad you did. I'm sorry it's such a mess, but I was just vacuuming and I got it stuck under the TV hood. I can't Can I help hear. you? Oh, no, no. It's too heavy to lift. Archie will do it when he gets home. Oh, it's no trouble. Oh, no. You might strain something. Don't be silly. <laughs> I got something for you. It's very special. I was gonna save it for Christmas, what? but I'm gonna show what? you right now. What? I love surprises. <laughs> what is it? My whole career is built on surprises. What you... you are... A scrapbook. I saved all your reviews from all over the country. Aren't you nice? <laughs> Well, we're just proud of you. I mean, there have been celebrities in this house. Sammy Davis Jr. and Lena Fleischhacker, whose niece did a TV commercial for Bad Breath. <laughs> You're the only one that's like family. In her final appearance, the character of Beverly LaSalle was killed in a bashing on Christmas, a chilling topic that was controversial for primetime 70s television. <laughs> Hey, little girl, what were you like for Christmas? I want Beverly to be alive. Oh, read it. Oh, I can't understand it. I mean, everything was going so good for him, and then somebody had to kill him. Oh. Yeah, just because he was different. <laughs> Lori, outside of television, was a tourist attraction. She wrote the entertainment column for the Bay Area Reporter and was a successful stand-up and cabaret star up until her death in 1984. Today, where are you from? Uh, Florida. Oh, Anita Bryan country, how lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I know, actually, you know, we can't kid Anita anymore now. She's decided she wants to coexist, right? And, and she is right. She is absolutely serious. We were playing cards together just the other night. <laughs> it's not easy to play cards with Anita Bryant. She keeps ripping up the queens. <laughs> Next is Christine Jorgensen. She was a pioneer of transgender rights. The poster girl, you could say, at a time when transgender was a word that did not exist in the public consciousness. She was a frank woman with a biting wit. The question to you was, has, have you, and it's funny you should mention High Gardner's response, have you finally ex achieved full acceptance? Oh, I, I don't know whether things would be full acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, with the intelligentsia, of course, in the, in the, uh, on the educational level of colleges and so forth, yes. Uh, in John Q. Public, I'm not so sure, sometimes, uh, people are still believing that little boys should have blue booties and little girls should have pink booties. Mm -hmm. After serving in World War II, Christine had come to terms with her gender identity and sought out the path to transition that led her to Denmark. She became front page news when she returned to the United States. Her personal story was misinterpreted, defamed, and even exploited. But Christine was always the one to set the record straight. The New York Daily News made me. 
They created me just as much as... Uh, Did you see what they called you today? No. The, the first lady of surgery. Me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today's Daily News? Mm -hmm. Oh, heavens. Oh. First lady of surgery. you think they hadn't done surgery before. They were doing brain surgery back <laughs> in prehistoric times. She faced a lot of hardships being denied work, marriage licenses, and faced a lot of criticism for just being herself. But she never let detractors stop her. She went on to record music, act in films, and even was a cabaret singer in New York. In fact, she was the only transgender woman to perform in the legendary Oscar de la Monaco's restaurant in downtown New York. Oh man, come around me like molds around the flame. If they get burned here, who am I? to blame or falling in love again never wanted to oh, what am I to do I can't help it don't go shit. and we move on to Sylvia Rivera a true saint of LGBT history a true hustler of her time she survived homelessness and even worked as a sex worker to survive at the age of 11. She was taken in by the drag queen community and given the name Sylvia, and she was a true activist from the word go, having involvement in the civil rights movement and women's liberation, and was a founding member of the Gay Liberation Front and the Star House. Revolution now! Give me a G! She was a plucky Latina who refused to be silent. In fact, she was one of the key instigators of the Stonewall Riots. Transgender community was also under that law, but we were treated by the police the, as the, the garbage of the homosexual community. So we were mistreated by being called, um, you don't know if you want to be a fag, you don't know if you're a woman, you're really a man. And then if you said anything to them, they would either arrest you or hit you. So we had learned through the years that it was best to keep our mouths shut, but that night, Obviously, as I tell the story, it, it shows you that we had had enough. The most beautiful thing that, that I found that evening to, was that I saw the anger of the people that were getting beat up and they, they had blood on their faces and on their bodies. They did not run away. They kept on coming back for more. We just kept on coming back. We didn't care if we got killed because we knew we had to fight for what we believed in, and it was our night. She would go on to fight tooth and nail for homeless LGBT youth and even resurrected her legendary star house in the 1990s, given the boom of homeless LGBT youth during the height of the AIDS crisis. Most of the kids here were alcoholics and people with AIDS. And that's one of the reasons that I, like, I stayed on for as long as I did until we got thrown out because there were people here that really needed help and the community was not here to help them. And Sylvia Downright refused to let drag culture or drag queens be erased from LGBT history. Now, on a side note, I really wanted to stress the respect I have for Sylvia Rivera and her contributions to the drag queen community. As a Latino and as a drag queen, we always look for role models. And Sylvia, I clung to early on in my youth. She cared about people and she cared about drag and especially the preservation of drag queens in our history. And I was lucky enough to be able to pay homage to her by putting her image in a mural I helped design for my high school alliance here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And our final queen is Marsha P. Johnson. This legendary activist is best known for being one of the instigators of the Stonewall Riot a moment in history that blazed a trail for LGBT rights and made America stand up and take notice of the injustices LGBT people faced. Marsha P was known as the saint of Christopher Street. She was a living legend in the New York scene. Besides her political work, she was also a member of Andy Warhol's Hot Peaches Review. Hey, 
Easily recognized by her tall stature, flat voice, and flowers that adorned her hair. She was known for her take no shit attitude and found herself in trouble quite a lot, which earned her the P in her name for pay it no mind. Which Marsha once told the judge, I went down to bail her out of court, and Marsha was in the docket, and she came up and Bruce Rice looked at it, and he said, uh, Marsha P. Johnson, and she said, uh, she had a very flat voice, we used to call her field voice, and she said, yes, and uh, she said, what does the P stand for? And she had the nerve to snap Judge Wright. She said, pay it no mind. <laughs> and he said, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. He said, get out of here. <laughs> pay no mind, Johnson. Marsha, pay no mind, Johnson. She helped co-found the Star House, an organization that was dedicated to finding housing for homeless LGBT youth. She was an activist right up to the 1990s with ACT UP, raising AIDS awareness. Well, that's our show, kittens. I hope you learned something. Remember, the power of drag goes beyond just dressing up and performing in bars. A wise lady once said, every time you dress up in drag, it's a political act. So, act up and keep raising eyebrows everywhere you go, be it physically or metaphorically.